For a go or no go, we are on go for problem number 21 of physics GRE GR0177. In the hydrogen spectrum, the ratio of the wavelengths for the Lyman alpha radiation from n equals 2 to n equals 1 to the Balmer alpha radiation from n equals 3 to n equals 2 is. So the Lyman alpha is where the electron is transitioning uh, in hydrogen from n equals 2 to n equals 1, and the Lyman beta is from n equals 3 to n equals 1. Now the Balmer series is from n equals greater than or equal to 3 to n equals 2. For both we can use the Rydberg formula uh, where 1 over lambda equals a constant r times the quantity 1 over nf squared minus 1 over ni squared where nf is our final n and ni is our initial n. So the Lyman alpha, we have 1 over lambda equals r times 1 over 1 squared minus 1 over 2 squared. 1 over lambda equals r times 3 fourths, so lambda equals 4 thirds r. For the Balmer series, 1 over lambda equals r times the quantity 1 over 2 squared minus the quantity 1 over 3 squared. So 1 over lambda equals r times 5 over 36, and lambda equals 36 over 5 r. So for the wavelength lambda of the Lyman alpha divided by the wavelength of lambda for the Balmer series, we have r times a quantity 4 times 5 divided by r times a quantity 3 times 36. We'll do some algebra. That equals 5 over 27, and that is answer B. Number 22. An astronomer observes a very small moon orbiting a planet and measures the moon's minimum and maximum distances from the planet's center and the moon's maximum orbital speed. Which of the following cannot be calculated from these measurements? Uh, so the gravitational force is going to equal the centripetal force, where g big m little m over r squared equals mv squared over r. So v is going to about equal g big M over r, that quantity square root, and v is going to about equal 2 pi a over t. Um, and for a circular orbit, a is going to equal r. Uh, you can see the diagram provided over here. Uh, so the mass of the smaller object is the one variable we do not have in the equations above, and so that is therefore going to be answer a. The mass of the smaller object being the mass of the moon. Number 23. A particle is constrained to move in a circle with a 10 meter radius. At one instant, the particle speed is 10 meters per second and it is increasing at a rate of 10 meters per second squared. The angle between the particle's velocity and acceleration vector is, so our centripetal force equals ma equals mv squared over r, our centripetal acceleration, a centripetal equals v squared over r, so a centripetal equals 10 squared over 10 equals 10 meters per second squared. Uh, so the vector addition of acceleration vectors, we're going to do the head of the first arrow, it's going to attach to the tail of the second arrow, uh, connect the resultant arrow tail to the original tail, and results in arrowhead to the final arrowhead. And so that is going to be diagrams down here in this beautiful diagram. Um, and there's also another diagram provided over here for the beginning of the problem. So the top left triangle is a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, this one right here. Uh, and since the tangential acceleration vector arrow and also the tangential velocity vector arrow will always point in the same direction, uh, the angle between the net acceleration of the system and the velocity must also be 45 degrees apart. Um, and so that is going to be answer C. And take your time to look at the diagrams to understand why. Um, Again, we have Pythagoras' theorem in here, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, um, and our angles right here. Uh, and lastly, on this problem, better late than ever, I want to point out, I did earlier in my physics jury solutions to other exams, we have our percentage down here that is going to equal the percentage of test takers that got the certain problem right or wrong. So let's continue. Number 24, a stone is thrown at an angle of 45 degrees above the horizontal x-axis in the positive x-direction. If air resistance is ignored, which of the velocity versus time graphs shown above best represents v of x versus t and v of y versus t respectively? 
So the x component of velocity is constant without air resistance because no force is slowed down in this direction before it hits the ground. Uh, so it is also positive. This is graph two. Uh, the y component will initially be positive as it is thrown up, but then we'll have zero velocity at the peak height before the stone comes back downward, which is the minus y, and has a negative velocity. A velocity has a linear relationship with gravitational acceleration. This is number three. So V of X for T is number two. V of Y versus T is number three. And those two together is answer C. Number 25. This is most fun I've had with pennies, uh, maybe ever. Number 25, seven pennies are arranged in a hexagonal planar pattern so as to touch each neighbor as shown in the figure above. Each penny is a uniform disk of mass M and radius R. What is the moment of inertia of the system of seven pennies about an axis that passes through the center of the central penny and is normal to the plane of the pennies? So the moment of inertia of a disk in the z component normal to the plane of the pennies is 1 half mr squared, uh, where r is the total radial distance to the center of the system. In this problem, one penny has a radius equal to r. One outer penny moment of inertia equals 1 half mr squared equals 1 half times the quantity 3r squared. That's going to equal 9 halves mr squared. There are six outer pennies, all at equal distances from the center. So add up the moment of inertia from each of the six outer pennies, and you have six times that quantity we just derived earlier, nine halves mr squared. That equals 54 over two mr squared. The moment of inertia of the center penny equals one half mr squared. Add the final seventh middle penny moment of inertia to this outer six pennies total moment of inertia to get the moment of inertia of the whole system. Uh, 54 over 2 mr squared plus 1 half mr squared is going to equal 55 over 2 mr squared. And that is answer E. Those pennies add up. Number 26. A thin uniform rod of mass m and length l is positioned vertically above an anchored frictionless pivot point as shown above and then allowed to fall to the ground. With what speed does the free end of the rod strike the ground? So our initial kinetic energy equals zero. The initial potential energy of the center of mass of the rod equals mgh over two. Final kinetic energy is rotational. It equals one half iw squared. Where the moment of inertia of the rod attached at one end, i equals one third ml squared, where l is the length. And the final kinetic energy equals therefore uh, 1 over 6 ml squared w squared where w equals v over l. Notice l not r since fixed the end point. Imagine the rod on the bottom half too rotating like a clock hand. Uh, so the final kinetic energy equals 1 6 ml squared v squared over l squared equals 1 over 6 mv squared. So mgh over 2 equals 1 over 6 mv squared where h the height is equal to the rod length. So GL equals one third V squared, where V then equals three GL, that quantity square root. And that is answer C. Twenty-seven. The eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator are always well, Hermitian operator eigenvalues are observables and therefore must be real. They are the things that we measure. So it's answer A. The states uh, ket1, ket2, ket3 are orthonormal. For what value of x are the states uh, psi1 and psi2 given above orthogonal? And it's going to be orthogonal if their inner product is 0, which means they're perpendicular. Uh, orthonormal means orthogonal and unit vectors of length 1. So our bra and ket with our psi 1, psi 2 equals 0, and the kets uh, 1, 2, 3 are all of unit length. They all equal 1. And our problem has a1, b1, c1 times uh, a2, b2, c2. Um, and so the inner product of that as this beautiful diagram, it's not a diagram, it's, it's a picture of an equation, 
uh, as that displays the inner product is going to equal 5 times 1 uh, plus minus 3 times minus 5 plus 2 times x equals 0 and 5 plus 15 plus 2x equals 0 so 20 equals minus 2x and minus 10 is going to equal the value of x. That is answer E. Number 29. The state psi equals 1 over square root of 6 psi minus 1 plus 1 over square root of 2 psi 1 plus 1 over square root of 3 psi 2 is a linear combination of three orthonormal eigenstates of the operator O hat corresponding to eigenvalues minus 1, 1, and 2. What is the expectation value of O hat for this state? Well, we're going to square each term and multiply it by its corresponding eigenvalue. Then sum up the terms to get the state's probability, i.e. the expectation value. So our probability is going to equal minus 1 times 1 over the square root of 6, that quantity 1 over the square root of 6 squared, plus 1 times 1 over the square root of 2, that quantity 1 over the square root of 2 squared, plus 2 times the quantity 1 over the square root of 3, that quantity 1 over the square root of 3 squared. So our probability is going to equal minus 1 over 6 plus 1 half plus 2 thirds. That is going to equal minus 1 6 plus 3 6 plus 4 6. That's going to equal 1. And that is answer C. Number 30. Which of the following functions could represent the radial wave function for an electron in an atom? R is the distance of the electron from the nucleus, A and B are constants. Okay, we're going to see our chart below. Thank you, hyperphysics, wealth of knowledge provided there. I use this from their website. And we're going to see that chart below. For the radial hydrogen component, this is the principal quantum number, n, at n equals 1, this is a constant times e to the minus r over a constant, and that is again exactly answer A, uh, which is one only. I hope that was a quick set of 10 for you, felt like a quick set of 10 for me, and I will see you again on our next set of videos.